this is an A-stable multi-vibrator, basically just an oscillator that we made in the previous video. Do you see how the LED is turning on from zero to 100 almost instantaneously? There's no ramp up, there's no fade in. And what I tried to make before was a delayed LED turn on circuit using capacitors, but I was only able to get it to work with a very smooth rise. So I'm gonna try and model this because this is exactly what I wanted, except it's, it's constantly blinking. So I'm going to try and adapt this to fix what I was working on the last time. I got it, I got the delay to work, but the LED would brighten very slowly over time. And I just wanted to pop on like this one. So let's try that out. I have this other breadboard right here. And I think the main idea with this is the capacitor charges and at a certain point, it allows the co the collector to go to ground. But until that point happens, the LED is the only path to ground. And that's what I thought I was doing before, but I'm going to try it this way. So I'm going to connect a 10K, just how I have it here, pretty much. And he'll be the guy that charges our capacitor. All right, here's another 22 microfarad capacitor. And I'm going to put him in like so and then we have a 1k on this one that's powering the collector of this transistor so I'll do that so we have the 10k charging the capacitor this is a positive lead of the capacitor and then we have this 1k going into the collector of the transistor, which is gonna power, I guess, the LED when it doesn't go through the collector. So that's what I'm thinking anyway. What we need next is the LED connected in parallel to the collector resistor junction. So in this case, I'm gonna make a spot there and then this will just go to ground right here. It's kind of jumping over. So you could see the, the uh, resistor is lined up with the LED and the collector of the transistor. They're all on a, in a straight line. And of course, he goes to ground. Next up, we need to collect, connect the, uh, the base to the uh, capacitor. So this base here needs to connect to this capacitor. All right, so that works. So we have our base connected to the capacitor. And now I guess we just need to ground the emitter. So the only question now is, on this one, the capacitor of course goes on this wire over to the collector. So on mine, I guess I'll just put them to ground, perhaps with another resistor. Uh, so let's see how that works. So maybe I'll put a 1K all right, maybe I should put a 10K so that it's charging the same rate as it's discharging, but I don't know. All right, let's plug them in and see what happens. So it blinked for a second there. I think it there was a delay when it, when it turned on, and then it flashed really quick, and then it turned off. But there was a, a slight delay, I think. So let's, uh, let's see if we can do it again. I'm going to discharge the capacitor, so I'm going to put in a resistor right here that can be our discharger I really should have checked I guess uh, the capa the uh, the value of the capacitor before I discharged it but we can do it again so I'll plug up power it goes here all right and I'm gonna plug it in again and I'll see what happens one more time I don't think there was a delay actually I think the LED is on by default so let's look at what's happening with the capacitor. So we're at 0 0.68 volts. So what seems to be happening right now is, well, what is happening, of course, is the power going from the collector is going out of the emitter, ignoring the LED. This means that the base is on right now. It's energized. So... If 
this capacitor only reached 0 0.68 volts, it seems to me that uh, as it charged up, the LED was on because the base was not activated. And we had to reach 0 0.6 volts for the base to turn on. So what we've kind of made here is a delayed turnoff circuit, whereas I guess I need to invert the power going to the LED. I think I'm going to put a bigger resistor going to the capacitor. So let's discharge it and see if it slows down the delay before the LED turns off. So it seems that the LED is going to be on by default because the base is not on by default. So let me plug up power and let me swap out this guy for a bigger one. And I think I have 100K around here somewhere. All right, so here's our 100K. So I'm gonna put it at the, the base, to the base junction, which of course is coming out of this gray cable. And then we'll just put our capacitor back in. Make sure power's off. And let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna turn it on in three, two, one. So it is indeed working the way that I thought. Uh, not how I had planned it, but I see some, some logic here that I might be able to work with. The LED turns on by default because the base is not energized, because the capacitor is not yet charged enough. And the and when the capacitor charges enough, and I guess this junction between the base and the capacitor reaches 0 0.6 volts or whatever it is for the base to turn on, then now the power at this junction is escaping through the base and going out the emitter along with the power going uh, from the into the collector. So now the, the power, the resistor that goes to the collector, is not forced to go through the LED anymore because now the base is is connected or energized. So we can jump over and go out the emitter. Whereas initially, of course, the collector is getting power from the resistor, but it can't go through the base since the base is not energized and it has to go through the LED. So by default, the base is locked. Power has to escape out the LED, illuminating it. But when the base is energized, that power can take a very cheap way home versus going through the LED. So in order to get this working the way I want it to work, I I think I need to basically add in an inverter here. Uh, so I guess I'll need another resistor, sorry, another uh, transistor. So basically the output from this circuit should go into the transistor of another circuit or into, into, the, into the base of another transistor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna discharge my capacitor and then <coughs> take out this LED since the LED is no longer the output. So now we're going to use the output, which should be a with, with a, a decent amount of resistance. So I'm going to put like a like a 10K that does our connecting for us. So let's take the output, which I'll put on this yellow cable. Used to be the LED. And this really used to be the LED. If you can imagine this yellow cable going to ground, that's ultimately what we had with the LED, the alternate path for this collector, as long as there is more resistance on this path versus the emitter. So we need to kind of beef this up with resistance. Um, so I'm gonna add a 1K in series. Really, I should, I should probably add like a 10K. I'm gonna do a 10K just to make sure that there is a lot more resistance than there is through the path uh, out of the emitter. And now, this should go into the, the base of another uh, transistor like that. And then this collector needs to also be charged by like a 1K or whatever can illuminate the LED to our desired uh, brightness. So we have power going to this transistor. We're basically just making an inverter. So we have the power going to this transistor and we have the output of this little circuit going into our base. So pretty much when this base is off, this base should be on and, and vice versa. Uh, so 
Now what we need to do is ground the emitter So that's grounded there. And uh, now we need to basically put our output, which is our LED. So we put it back in the same configuration as it was before. It's pretty much the alternate path for the power to go to escape when the base is not energized. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I am very curious. So let's give it a shot. I think I connected everything that I need. Although my uh, my capacitor is still on timeout, cooling off over here. So I need to put that back in. All right. All right, so I'm gonna plug in power in three, two, one. Pew. And nothing is happening. I really thought that would work. So what does this mean? All right, let's make sure that we have power running since nothing is sort of showing. So we have our meter. Let's check our voltage capacitor. Is that the 0 0.6766 that it was before? Which means this base is activated. Which means that this collector is getting power and it's going to the emitter. Not sure. I feel like it's close to doing what I want. Let's take out this guy and maybe put a 1K. All right, so I have that plugged in. Let me take out my guy off timeout, put him back in. My power is off right now. All right, power's on. Nothing happening again. Not really sure what is wrong here because the circuit was working as we thought before. LED was on by default. Base was off. When the capacitor charged, base turned on, turning off the LED. But in this case, it seems there's no power going directly to this base. There should be power going to the base. Oh wait, I have this wrong. I'm, I am... I have made a big mistake here, I think. Although this LED never illuminates. And it should be on by default. If I take out this transistor, no power in this LED. So there's, oh, this breadboard is messing up. Ah. Yeah, this breadboard is, is something wrong with this breadboard. So I need to, I guess, change the breadboard. Maybe I need to make an indicator to make sure that the breadboard is working properly. So I'm gonna put an indicator uh, in between here where my discharger is, <clears throat> just to make sure that it's working. Wow, what a silly problem. All right, so power's out. I'm gonna put a 1K right here, and then just put an LED in. And this is just be our, like our status. Maybe I'll put a more interesting color. Green. All right, so I'm gonna test it with my power. All right, so we have green light, meaning our circuit is working. Although down here, it's not the same. So there must be something wrong down here. How annoying. All right, so I guess I'm going to uh, move everything down here. So I'll just, I'll just duplicate everything here and, and put it over here. All right, so I built it back the way it was before where the LED is the output for the initial system. So the LED is ultimately connected to the collector here and the resistor. Uh, so I'm gonna put my, my capacitor into its new spot and make sure this works before I move on again. All right, so I'm gonna plug in power, three, two, one.
So it is back to how it was. LED turns on initially, then it turns off after a second. So now I'm going to discharge him again and then rebuild back the inverter system, hopefully. Uh, we have our output, our yellow, which is going to go into the base of another transistor as we had it before. And this new transistor is going to have power go into its collector. And then we have our output, which uh, was going to be the green, but now it's just going to be the, the red. So I'll put it back. So he's grounded. And so ultimately, when this transistor is off, the LED must be on. We need to ground now. And we did have resistance between these two before, so I guess I'll put that back because I, I guess it was a fail test. All right, and then I'll do like a 10K. Okay, so hopefully when this, when power turns on at, at time zero, I guess is what they say, uh, capacitor should be discharged, and I'll double check that right now just to make sure. So capacitor should be discharged, which means the base has no energy because it shares this junction, which means the collector has no path through the emitter, so it must go out this cable, which goes into this base, which can then uh, go to ground, turning off the LED. But then once this base is energized enough from the charge in the capacitor, the collector can go up into the transistor and out the emitter, skipping this, this orange cable, which turns off this transistor, which turns on the LED. So we should have a delayed LED turn on. Three, two, one, boop. Hey, it worked. That's exactly what I wanted. So now it will turn on immediately because the capacitor is still charged. So as I plug in and out, although it still has a slight delay, which is interesting. I guess the capacitor is discharging between attempts. So let's plug this in and see. Uh, so we should have zero volts and by that logic, we have 0 0.3 volts, but it is dropping. So it's discharging slowly, but this LED is turning on rapidly. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted. So this means that if we, ch if we swap out this uh, capacitor with a bigger one, then it should slow it down, right? All right, so let's plug in. In three, two, one, on. Waiting for it to turn on. Hey, there he is. Amazing. I am very, very happy with this. This is exactly what I wanted the last time. So this is really cool. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted to happen. I couldn't get it done really uh, in the previous attempt, but I, I did get it to delay and then it slowly turned on. But this is what I wanted where it just instantly, once it once it's on, it's 100% on. So this is perfect. I will move on.